Pancreatic cystic neoplasms account for up to 50% of pancreatic cysts and are increasingly found on cross-sectional imaging. There are four subtypes with varying malignant potential. Serous cystic neoplasms, mucinous cystic neoplasms, solid pseudopapillary neoplasms, and intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasms, or IPMNs. Serous cystic neoplasms are generally benign, located throughout the pancreas, and more commonly found in older patients with a female predominance. Most are asymptomatic, but large lesions can cause obstruction of the bile duct and jaundice, obstruction of the pancreatic duct and pancreatitis, or obstruction of the stomach and gastric outlet obstruction. Fluid analysis demonstrates no continuity with the pancreatic duct and low amylase, as well as low CA and absence of mucin. On imaging, they are large, well-circumscribed cysts and can feature characteristic findings such as a starburst pattern central scar with calcifications, or more classically, a cluster of grapes or honeycomb appearance. Observation is preferred unless symptomatic or unable to distinguish from potentially malignant lesions. Mucinous cystic neoplasms are singular, large, thick-walled cysts lined with mucin-secreting columnar epithelium with a characteristic ovarian-type stroma. There is a strong female predominance, typically during middle age, and patients may present with vague abdominal pain. These tumors are most commonly found in the body and tail of the pancreas with a 15% risk of malignancy. These lesions do not communicate with the duct and on fluid analysis are characterized by viscous fluid with an elevated CEA level, low amylase, and positive for mucin. On cross-sectional imaging, they most commonly appear as solitary unilocular lesions, but may also contain septations or a rim of calcification. All suspected MCN should be resected in suitable operative candidates. Solid pseudopapillary tumor is a solid tumor with a tendency for cystic degeneration. Although usually benign, it can be aggressive with invasion of local structures and some malignant and even metastatic potential. This tumor is most often seen in younger women, presenting with a large pancreatic tail mass that may cause abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, or a palpable mass when excessively large. Imaging demonstrates a heterogeneous mixed solid cystic lesion with necrosis and may feature the four C's, a circumscribed cystic appearing lesion with a capsule that is often internally calcified. There are no distinct tumor markers and tumors are largely necrotic. Given their unpredictable but real metastatic potential, all SPN should be resected. Introductal papillary mucinous neoplasms are mucin producing neoplasms characterized by diffuse or segmental involvement of the main pancreatic duct or major side branches. IPMNs follow the dysplasia of the invasive carcinoma sequence with differing malignant potential based on anatomic and histologic characteristics. Main duct IPMNs are characterized by diffuse or segmental involvement of the main duct, whereas branch duct IPMNs can occur anywhere within the pancreas with a lower risk of malignant transformation. Most are found incidentally on imaging in the 6th to 7th decade of life and affect male and females equally. On fluid analysis, these tumors have elevated amylase levels because of ductal continuity as well as elevated CEA levels. On imaging, they appear as hypoattenuating cystic lesions with pancreatic ductal dilatation best visualized on MRI. Generally speaking, resection is recommended for all main duct IPMNs and IPMNs with high-risk stigmata. Pancreatic pseudocysts are a local complication of acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis and are characterized as a fluid collection persisting beyond four weeks. This is a non-neoplastic inflammatory process as the wall of pseudocysts contain collagen and granulation tissue and is not a true epithelium. Pseudocysts communicate with the pancreatic duct and can be located throughout the pancreas and have an elevated amylase on fluid analysis with no mucin or elevated tumor markers. On imaging, they are well-circumscribed, homogeneous, low-attenuating fluid collections. In summary, it is important to be able to distinguish pseudocysts from cystic neoplasms of the pancreas, as well as differentiate between the four subtypes of neoplasms.